Hi everyone, welcome to Conversations with Miss T, and that is me. I am having a conversation with Sam Tanda Mangani. Sam Tanda is a 23-year-old actor, director, and a film producer. He's currently based in the Western Cape in South Africa. Guys, thanks again for tuning in, and I hope that you guys will enjoy this. So what does your day look like today? Today, um, we are shooting um, an extra scene for the, sh the film, um, Life Happened. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then uh, my weekend basically starts and Your ends. Week? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, it starts and ends on a Sunday. That's funny. Um, yeah. where, I know you're closer, but where were you like born and raised? I was born in Cape Town, Paul in a township called Mbekweni. I was born and raised here. So I've lived here all my life, basically. But my hometown, my hometown is in Eastern Cape, Ekala. Right, okay. And how often do you go to the Eastern Cape? Yeah, not very often. The last time I was there, it was in 2016. Yeah, I spent Christmas and New Year's there and came back 2017. Okay. So that, I think that was the last time I went to my hometown. Um, otherwise, um, the last time I went to Eastern Cape was in 2018. And and how about Joburg? Because that's where the money is, right? Is that still the case? Yes, it is. But I haven't been to Joburg. I always passed Joburg, heading somewhere else. So I haven't been there. But it's a dream. I think for any artist... Um, who is in Cape Town or based anywhere else other than Joburg, it's their dream to be in Joburg because, I mean, like you said, that's where the money is. That's where right. the opportunities are. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so why acting? Wait, before before I ask you that, I just want to find out when you're not writing screenplays, is that what you guys call them? So yeah. <laughs> when I'm you're not writing them. You're not? <laughs> you're not? No, I'm not. You're not going to get there? Isn't that just like another thing that you will eventually get to? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I never thought I would get to producing. So maybe in the near future, yeah, I would write something uh, of mine. Maybe. Yeah, I prophesy. <laughs> <laughs> I just see. I just see. <laughs> okay, so when you're not doing all of that, what what are you doing? Do you mean like career-wise or in my spare time? Your spare time, like during your leisure, what what do you do? Your hobbies, if you have a hobby. You yeah. know, the one thing, it's it's the weirdest thing, but the one thing that I enjoy to do is just to sleep and spend time in my room. Because um, I, think, I think I'm a workaholic because every day there's just something to do. Um, it's either I'm communicating with someone regarding work, Rehearsing rehearsals, I'm scheduling rehearsals um, mm -hmm. for a play that I'm that I'm casted in. You know, there's just always something to do, and I hardly have time for myself. So the only time that I get every little chance I get, I spend it with myself, because I spend so much time with other people, other actors, other creatives, and we speak the same language all the time, pretty much twenty four seven. If I'm not exaggerating. So there are times where I just need to be alone and be with myself and enjoy my own company. So if I'm not sleeping or napping or resting, I am watching movies or catching up on a series because I haven't done it in a while. Right. Because of yeah. work, work, work. I mean, you're, you're on the other side of the camera, right? <laughs> we are the <laughs> audience and you are on the other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. When, when did you start? When did you start acting? The very first time I started acting, it was in 2010. I was 12 years old then. Um, I did it for like a year. And then after that, the organization that was doing, was giving, because there were only a few organizations in my township that were doing um, arts. So when it closed down, the others opened, but they were very far from my house. So my grandmother, who I lived with, was very was uncomfortable with me having to walk alone, going to rehearsals, going to work with people that she was not familiar with. So I guess she was being protective at that time. Um, well, at that time, I didn't understand why. So as a result, I took a seven-year gap resting with, like I 
not acting, not rehearsing anything. And then came back 2017, um, joined another group and a lot of groups opened up in my community um, that were doing arts. So since then I started acting mainly theater. Um, then 2018, that's when I first shot my first short film working in front of the camera. It was an awesome and scary experience as well. So um, yeah, that's when I started with my, with my um, filming career as an actor, like on screen. Right. Um, 2018. Before that, it was all theater and um, mostly theater trained. Yeah. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, like theater is more thrilling, right? Because the audience is there. It's just, it's live. It's happening right here in front of you. True, yeah. True. Yeah. And what was Definitely. your most, yeah, what was your most exciting experience being on stage? You know, there's nothing more exciting for me um, as a performer to, to to hearing other than hearing audience members engaging to what's happening on stage. It gives me that reassurance that I am doing the right thing. I am being authentic. I'm being true to the story, to the character. Um, it, it, it just gives a lot of validation to me as an artist that, okay, I think I did my job here perfectly so that's the only thing that excites me when get when i'm hearing on stage because i don't always hear them because i'm always in the moment so when i have those split seconds where i just doze out of the moment and i could hear the audience engaging and then coming back to the moment again it just lifts my, my heart up it, i skip a beat <laughs> <laughs> i get that i get that by the way i just want to say that when you get in the moment you get in the moment because i'm talking mm. to you now and i've seen some of your videos and i'm just like it's two different people you know the same face mm. of course but i mean when you get into character man that is amazing oh thank you thank you <laughs> yeah. it's not easy though it's not easy getting into that character how do you do it, it? Takes, it takes a lot of time, you know, a lot of effort to to be in the moment, to be the characters. Yeah. And what goes on, yeah. what goes on in your head at the time when you're trying to um, be the character, when you're trying to um, be alive in the scene? You know, um, firstly, I strip myself off. You know, I completely leave Siam Tanda alone. Um, I'm, I have a ring that I always wear on my left, on my on my right hand side. Um, I take it off always when I'm performing or whenever I'm playing a role. I feel like this it's what connects me to myself mostly. So I take it off, and that's when I'm just naked now. So I wear the whole um, character mentally and physically, you know, with clothes, different outfits, and I just try to get myself to where they are mentally. Right. Mm -hmm. How are they feeling right now? You know, my, a friend of mine always says that an actor's job does not start on page one of the script. It starts the day before page one. So I have to understand like who is he before? How, how was, how, what, what's going on in his mind before this first page? So I put myself in those shoes, which is a dangerous thing and challenging thing to do because each character is different you know they they go through the most differently so I try to put myself there to feel what they were feeling or what they are feeling and right. boom do you do you I because I hear you say that and I think for me the most dangerous thing would be to completely lose yourself even after you know the movie hits the end and then mm. you're still in character and, you know, for you, at least you have the, the ring as a reminder, but do you ever feel like you have emotions lingering around or the character that you are playing linger, lingering around even after the acting is done? Definitely, yes. It takes me a day fully to, to fully get out of character. You know, um, sometimes it, then it gets alarming for me when it's more than just a day because I just get home. I'm not in the mood to talk to anyone. I just want to be myself and find myself and just do things that reminds me of myself, like wearing the ring, um, watching movies. Even I, I sometimes repeat movies because like I, it's my some of my favorite movies just to remind myself, oh, you are Sam Tana now. You're no longer the other guy that you were playing. And I just slip it off after that. And then I wake, I should wake up fine. 
Okay. But okay. sometimes it mm-hmm. takes it takes longer than that. You know, that's when I I'm really I've been really working on the character, especially in theater. You know, because we rehearse a, almost every day, the whole week. Mm-hmm. So the character you 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 eventually become the character subconsciously. So you do things and say things that you the character would do or say without you realizing it, you know? Sometimes I would, I would realize it later on, I'm like, no man, this is what the character would do. This is what the character, this is how the character would, re- would react to, to a situation like that, that I just reacted to, you know? Um, it's, it's, not, it's not always easy, but it, it, it's possible. Yeah. And how much leeway do you have in terms of choosing which character do you, which character you want to be? Um, right now I'm at that place now where I, where I choose because before I was just taking any character that came because I just wanted to act, you know, as I grow now, as I develop, um, and, and, and getting more experience within the craft, um, I want to choose things that will challenge me right now. Um, I don't want to choose the same characters over and over because people are going to be seeing pretty much the same thing that they saw in a previous movie or a previous play. That I did. So I try to challenge myself a lot these days, um, choosing characters that are completely different from the previous ones that I've played and choosing something that's completely different from me as well as an individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you're completely stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I just want to say now you can breathe. Now you're fine. You look comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like the first few minutes, you know, you get so tense because you just want to say the right yeah, thing. Yeah. And then after a while, you know, you just kind of get into it and it doesn't enough. matter anymore. Yeah. So you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any questions? <laughs> um, what do you do? What do you do? Okay. What do you think I do? Um... I think you, because since you said you are in the Middle East, Middle North, no, Eastern uh, Asia. East Asia, right? So I think you, you're a teacher, but deep down you are a broadcaster. You love yes. the entertainment space. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Am uh, I yeah, right? I, <laughs> yes, you're correct. Uh, I am a teacher, and I just started this podcasting thing because I love talking to people and mm. my my love language is quality time so when I do this I actually get to have that quality time with people which is also nice you know because I don't know if you've noticed it's so hard nowadays to sit with somebody without the phone interrupting you know the whole conversation mm. and stuff um, yeah so I really like having these moments and um, I'm also an author so I'm new in the creative space <laughs> Um, before I start asking you about Life Happened, um, the movie, I want to play a little game, right? All right. Okay, so you have to pick truth or dare. Truth. (laughs) Um, okay. Have you ever kissed uh, another character on stage and how did that feel? On stage, no, I haven't kissed another character on stage. Um, it was only in a film. Yes, I, I only had a one kissing scene in a film, and it was just a few seconds. It, it was just like a, a morning greet, like, and then there was it. How did it you know, feel? Um, how did it, I, I was nervous about it, especially when I saw it on the script. I was like, okay, they kiss. I'm like, will the other actress like be relaxed enough, willing to do it? Because I know some some they don't like um, kissing scenes, kissing strangers. Because I never um I never met the actress before. I only met her on set on the day we were shooting. So I was worried that she might like uncomfortable. Um, I, I like I was overthinking the whole the whole process, and it was it turned out to be just a like it was it was like a normal thing at work basically it's like me shaking someone else's hand you know it that's how it felt like it wasn't something that was out there outrageous like oh it's a kissing scene no it was like okay that's just it we're moving okay and you you never felt anything no 
Do you think you might be in danger of feeling something if it were like, you know, to be a longer kiss? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of that because I've never experienced something longer than two seconds. Uh -huh. So I'm really afraid that so, like something might come up, especially with um, sex scenes, you know, those are the things that give me anxiety. Cause I, I, I like I'm 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 a I'm a overthinker like what if what if what if this happens what if that doesn't happen you know but I I, I I think Loki I think that nothing would happen you know when I console myself nothing happens because everyone will be in the spur of the moment everyone will be um deep in the characters that they are playing yeah. so there's no time to be yourself to think oh something else other than this right, work right. thing. And there's like also like a bunch of people surrounding you and saying yes, it's very yes. busy. Yeah. Yes, crew members, a lot of them. And <laughs> when I watch some move, some behind the scenes movies, I don't I would see there's there's a ton of people just behind the camera, you know, yeah. while the actors are just having a dialogue, maybe something emotional. And you'd find that there's a lot of people behind the scenes yeah. watching. So um, I doubt there's been time to to be thinking about a lot of things. Yeah, to feel something, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I want to I want to talk about the movie because that's how I was I was just going through my phone and I saw this book and I was like, okay, this is an interesting book. And as I was doing more and more research, by that I mean just clicking and clicking on things. Mm. Then I found this and my first question was, okay, who is Vincent, right? And and then I figured out no, actually this is Actually, no, you explain it because I kind of messed with my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Vincent Mafila is a fictional character. Um, he's our main character on the story Life Happened. Um, he is sort of an author. You know, without saying a lot about the story, obviously, because it hasn't come out yet and the trailer hasn't been out yet. So I can't be sharing a lot about the story, but... Um, what I can say is that Vincent is, is this um, middle-aged man. He's in his 40s, late 40s. Um, a lot of daddy problems. Um, pretty much is having sort of a, a mini life crisis, midlife crisis type of thing going on. And mm -hmm. also he's dying. He was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. So he's trying to connect with himself because he felt like he feels like he doesn't know who he is, you know, because of the the emotional trauma that he went through um, with his father, not seeing eye to eye, you know, having to attend therapy, trying to find who he is, trying to understand why his life is like this, you know. Um, at some point, he eventually goes to consult to a Sangoma traditional healer, um, just to get clarity. Right. Okay. Now you've said enough. I wrote notes. Okay. So I'm just going, going to like refer to my notes. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> no, problem, no problem. There's, um, there's this line that you guys put up in your caption where the psychologist says something like, um, I read some of the pages in the book, obviously, you know, um, the fictional book <laughs> mm -hmm. and it felt like I was invading your privacy. What's going on in that scene? In that scene, so Vincent is having an interview with um, a local TV host. So he, he's in a show. Okay. Um, like sort of um, the Ellen DeGeneres show type of vibe. So he's there promoting his book. And in his book, he talks about him being in a closet because ah. Vincent is a homosexual. Ah. But it was difficult because he's old. Um, when you go back in time, um, it was still something that was taboo, especially in South Africa, that um, young men are homosexuals, you know, having these feelings. So he, he talks about that story in his book where how he started feeling and understanding his emotions towards the same gender. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, 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 the presenter there says it felt like he was invading the privacy because Vincent was just so open about everything on that book. Okay. About his whole life. I'm going to ask this now. Are the pages blank or is that like an actual book? <laughs> Are you not allowed to say it? No, it's, um, I can I can say it. Um, the, the pages are not blank. Um, we got a different book that 
um, at, at, is thick the same way that we wanted it to be, you know? So we just got a cover and covered it up. Okay, yeah. okay. Wow, that's that's oh, amazing. You, you, mean the, you mean the book, the book that you, you, you saw on the Instagram? Yeah. Um, that, that was designed by a graphic designer. We got someone to, to, to create the poster and to create the feel and look of the book. It's, it's amazing. It is, it is incredible. It looks so real. <laughs> it looks so genuine. Um, so the, the title of the book is. Life happened. Life happened. And he yes. says that he wants people to know that he was here. Mm. What is the message behind that? Um, for the long, like I said, he, he was trying to connect with himself, trying to find himself, who he is and his purpose on earth. So that book states exactly that he was there, he existed, he had a life and this is the life that he wanted, you know? Um, yeah, pretty much that, that, that's what I can say. I okay, don't want to, okay. I don't want to, I don't want to get it further get it. and expose a lot. Yeah. I know, and you kind of said a lot. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> what, no is your, what is your what is your role? Is it role or character in the story? In the story, I played the sixteen year old um, Vincent in the story, um, and I also produced the story. I saw well. that. How's that so, been like? It's been an awesome journey. I don't lie. Stressful, a lot, um, but it was. Overall, it was fun. You know, mm -hmm. it was a fun experience. It was it was my first time producing something. Um, so it was just an amazing experience. I learned a lot yeah. in the whole process. What is it that you learned that you feel like you did not know before? You know, um, how the industry goes, basically. Um, what the things that um, is expected of me as a producer, because before, um, when I wanted to produce, uh, I wanted to branch in producing, I literally Googled what a producer does, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> I Googled everything and I asked around to people who've been on professional sets before, because mostly I've been working with student productions. So everything that I know about a director, about a, a producer, it's something that I learned on set of students. So obviously they are also learning. Um, we are all learning. That, that was the beauty of it, being in the, being on set with students. Everyone is learning there. Um, so I Googled everything, I asked around, and I found and discovered that yes, it, the job is the same, but some people do it differently. Some producers do things differently. They offer these for actors and crew members, and some they don't. You know, it's 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 a lot, it's a lot of things that I learned pretty much. Um, most importantly, communication, how to communicate, how to negotiate um, with actors, with crew members, you know, how to come to one um, conclusion with both parties involved. Right. Yeah, okay. that's the one thing that yeah. I And I mean, you said you're like 23. I think this is a huge accomplishment mm -hmm. for you. And personally, I'm, I'm very proud of you, you know, that you've made it this far yeah. at this age. <laughs> um, I want to ask you something. I'm just not sure how to phrase it. I'll try to piss it up. <laughs> just so I want to put you on the spot and ask you to act out something for like 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What do I do? Um, uh, I'm so doesn't sorry. It doesn't have to be in English because um, right now I've got a monologue in my head from a play that I recently did. Okay, uh, close is fine. Let's let's do the closer one first and then we'll do the English one later. But your network is acting up again. <laughs> my network. Uh, oh, you're sorry. back. You're fine. Okay, you ready? Okay. <sighs> I'm trying to laugh. <laughs> um, okay. So now, as you guess, I didn't send in the man to me to show him a chance to help him. Slap a gang of Cuban TV. Lo, why is it going to be in Jenny? Who can do? Pulling Benjo Cubas. We're actually not going to sit. 
Zillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was weird. That was awkward. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so emotional. Ah! <laughs> For real. <laughs> like when you start when you started, I was laughing, right? Because you're actually doing it. And then later you like your face completely changed and it was like I could see you getting teary. And I'm like, oh, this is happening, this is happening. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Does Please don't cry. <laughs> I'm so sorry I made you do it, but you did such a great job. Thank you. Do you understand closer? Yeah, yeah, my closer. What what was the monologue about? Um, so um in the play called titled Ganga Nyoko in Zimanyoko, um, this character is he, he just had a breakdown in with his in front of his friend. So they were talking about his late father who recently passed away. So he also had daddy problems. Um, his father was so abusive towards him physically and emotionally. So he, 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 was, he was just toxic. He was a toxic human being to a point where my character had to leave from Eastern Cape to Joburg and only came back seven years later when he only he heard that his father is dead. Hence he's saying now he's back which means the person that was standing in his way um, is no more. So he came here now just to make sure that this bad person is really gone. dead, mm. you know, gone. And that's mm. when he's gonna, he was about to forget about everything and just move on with his life again because his father still had a hold on him that was an emotional hold, mm. you know. Mm. Okay. So he still had that was very that was very gripping, by the way. Like it was just less than a minute, but it was very gripping. You see, the thing you do with your face, so amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you have an English one now for my English? Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Okay. Yeah, I think from another play. Um okay. Now I have to get out of that character and into another one. It's okay. Take your time. You know, they were standing next to the field, dissing each other with closer boycotts. Ethan and I went over there to hang with them, but then Tepu mentioned something Amakaya. Immediately after that joke, the rest of his crew started to laugh. Then Ethan added something about us not belonging there. He then had said, Claire Namko Noom, Marikoni Vante Vietnam, but mine as me. That's when I started the fight, you know. Yes, I had this, it's a very <laughs> short one. That's all I can think of about right now. <laughs> Thank you. The character, by the way, was 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 um a guy who was raised in a colored community. You know, colored meaning. I don't know whether you got you understand. You South African. I know. I know. Yeah, I'm South African. Yeah, yeah. I get what colored means. Yeah. Yes. So he he was raised um in a colored family family, and he can't speak. It's closer. 
So he, he has this inner conflict, wanting to know himself. You know, most of my characters, if not all of them, they've got this thing of trying to know who they are, you know, their inner conflict. So this character also has some um, sort of inner conflict mm-hmm. with himself. He's trying to find himself as well, like his roots. Yeah. Because he wants to go to the initiation school. Um, he wants to know who, like, what, what's their clan name, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. The thing you did with your hands, that was that was nice. <laughs> okay. He's I'm, a 16 just... year old, though. He's a 16 year old, so. Okay. They, you... I feel like they are like that. Yeah, they are. Very expressive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like I've just kind of ran out of questions. I don't want to end the interview, so I'm thinking what else we could possibly talk about. Um, <laughs> I know this is weird. You probably don't experience this. You see, I'm an amateur when it comes to these. I, I, I actually experience a lot of uh, it a lot, you know, because when, when in some interviews you would vibe uh, like it's so nice and it would go and go and go and go. And now everything that you plan for, we finish it in like few minutes then right the, the time that is expected so i kind of understand and i get that a lot i oh, get that a lot you. even when, when i'm doing radio um interviews you know and sometimes the interview lasts like 10 minutes and then it maybe it might be shorter because we're just vibing we're running we're going with the yeah everything. yeah but at least they they can play music right they can take like a music break <laughs> <Ad breaks. laughs> we don't have any of that here sorry <laughs> Um, so what's that? What's the plan, man? The future plan? The future, um, obviously Joburg, the future, um, creating, acting, um, hopefully being on something that's as big um, as, like some something that's on Netflix, you know, um, yeah, that that's that that's what I'm working towards, you yeah. know, working and collaborating with other filmmakers because um I'm a filmmaker now, qualified filmmaker I guess. Yes. Um, so to more collaborations with other filmmakers, creating and producing good material, um, good stories that yeah. can touch a lot of people, you know, and because I believe that um storytelling is all about healing. That is true. Um, everyone sort of finds themselves. They find something they relate to, to a story. Be it. It's a comedy, it's a sad, it's a, maybe a horror. Something, one moment within the story or the film, someone somewhere relates to it. You know? So I'm going to be making and creating such films, such projects that hit people and heals them and teaches them yeah wait I have two questions I have a question but I want to ask you this so is grandma okay with you now you know going about your business and seeing people that she doesn't know uh (laughs) my grandmother is late now so before before that um she 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 was you know she, she was the very first person to watch me perform oh 11 years ago when I first started so she's been supportive. She's been supportive even when, um, I because I I would leave school early to go and attend castings when I when I was still in high school. You know, I had a modeling agent, and I would get castings that were a bit earlier, like say around twelve or one p.m. So, so I live in Power, and most of the the all the castings actually were in Cape Town. That's like an hour drive, and with a train because I would take the train. It would take me an hour and a half to get to Cape Town for the or public transport. So I would leave school early to go and attend the casting and cross fingers that I get the job. So every like once in a while, it would be something like that. She would allow me to do that because she saw the passion that I had for, for my craft. Even after high school, I would spend a lot of hours at rehearsals. I would leave at home at around eight past seven to catch the 8.30 train to campus and my class would end at around 2 p.m. So after that, I would come home and I wouldn't come directly home. I would get off at uh, my rehearsal venue and rehearse from 5 till 7 p.m. 
and only come back at around 8 p.m. So I would be gone for like 12 hours at home and only come back just to eat and sleep and sleep, prepare yeah. for the next day. Mm -hmm. So it was a continuous thing, like it was happening all the time, especially when I was in a drama group in 2017. So she would really understand, she would see the passion. Every time I would say I'm performing, um, say at the Baxter Theater, she would be there. I would make sure that she's there. You know, she would make efforts of going to watch me, take public transport, which is so draining for like for, for a youngster like me. So you can imagine for someone who's in their 60s, early 70s, it would have, it was, it was, it was a nightmare, but she would go there and see me perform, come back again. So she was very supportive. Um, now that she's no, she's no longer around, she's no longer with us. My my grandma, my aunt, who's my mom's sister, um, she she she's the one now who's giving me the support. She's been giving me the support though, even when my grandmother's still around. So mm -hmm. now she's the primary supporter. Um, you know, uh, when I when I decided to even uh, deregister at varsity, because I was not happy with what I'm doing, I wanted to be an actor. You know, I wanted to study the craft. It happened that I didn't get accepted, but I didn't let that stop me. What, wait, 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 wait. What did you enroll for? Before? Yeah. Um, before, um, in 2017, so let me go back a bit. 2017, I did a one-year certificate, a one-year course um, studying Microsoft Office. After that, I applied for IT. I did a higher certificate in IT as well. So after that, I couldn't complete uh, the certificate because um, I, I, I failed two modules. And when I applied to rewrite, they said, I can't, I have to redo them for the whole year. So I was not about doing two modules for the whole year. So I changed um, courses to a diploma in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, I did first year, second year. I was like, no, I can't handle this. This is not my thing because with all the qualifications that I did, I was ready to give them all up for acting. I would choose acting all over school, basically. I would choose to go to rehearsals. I would choose to leave class early to go attend um, auditions that were around campus, you know? Um, so I took the decision right there and there that for my own mental health, for my own happiness, I'm gonna leave this and I'm gonna pursue what I want because I, I had enough confidence in myself that it is possible. You know, I'm a firm believer in Christ. So I prayed about it, uh, everything. And up until I was like, I'm sure this is something that I'm going to do now. I understand it's going to be a life-changing decision. I understand it's not going to be easy, but it's worth a try. It's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. So I got on the phone with my aunt. I told her I am about to register, deregister from varsity. I am not happy at all. I am actually depressed because I don't love what I'm doing and I don't see myself doing a nine to five. I don't see myself sitting in an office the whole day, staring at a laptop or computer, attending meetings left, right and center. No, it won't make me happy at all. Yes, sure, I can stay and finish the qualification, but it's gonna be pretty much useless. I'm wasting time, time that I could have done to um, improve my skill, learn more in my craft. So, decided I'll deregister. And after deregistering, actually, a lot of things happened. Good things happened. I learned a lot within the craft. Um, I got a lot of opportunities. I got to work with amazing people. Um, I got to network with them. I got to do a lot of things that I couldn't do when I was still a full-time student, you know. Mm. So after that, I tried to apply for to study theater at most of the universities around here. Um, I couldn't get in. Um, it's either the, 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 the they were fully subscribed, all the courses were full, or I didn't meet the bare minimum in some institutions. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Show must go on after all. Um, I'm still continuing right now, practicing my craft. I'm still continuing um, doing film. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. early this year, um, I applied for a filmmaking course, a short film uh, making course that completed it and that's when I started that's when I had my director's debut I directed a documentary which is coming soon by the way okay uh, um yeah 
that's when that's after after I was done with the course, that's when I got more interested in being behind the scenes, like mm. producing. Yeah. yeah. And the filmmaking course that you did, did you feel like you were you were more in tune with it? Did you feel like yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. this is something that um I relate to, you know, you know, this is something that I, I like I have a purpose now. I feel like I feel like I've got a good reason to wake up in the morning and attend classes. Mm-hmm. Because it was the previous courses, I would hate waking up very early. I would sometimes be like, no, I don't feel like waking up today. Let me work from home. I'll yeah. just text my friends and ask them to email me the notes. Or if the lecturer is going to email us the notes, I'll just download them and study from home and work from home and just submit my assignments from home. I don't need to go to campus, not unless I had a group assignment. So with this course, um, I felt like I, I got excited actually waking up every day to go to school and learn something. And the most exciting part was finally shooting on documentaries that we've been working on for mm. the longest time. I think the course was three months. So for two months, we were in pre-production and we shot the towards the last week of the course. Mm. So it was an exciting and stressful journey, you know, the, the good stress the good stress um, yeah. and nerves as well, because you want to do good. I feel like nerves guide you to doing, to, to doing the right thing and good um, yeah. work. I like what you said about, you know, um, even when you were rejected at universities, that the show must go on because sometimes mm-hmm. I think we take that personal. We say they rejected yeah. me because I'm not good enough, but that is not always the case, you know? So I like that you took that approach and you kept on going. And I could definitely resonate with what you're saying because I knew that I wanted to be a teacher um, as soon as I graduated. And I studied microbiology yeah. science, which I have like this much interest in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I've, I've managed like when I decided that I was going to be a teacher things kind of fell into place even though I did not have a teaching qualification so I can totally resonate mm-hmm. with what you're saying um, right now and you know what I realized is that you can because schooling never really ends so if you decide later yeah. on that you want to qualify for something you could always take it up yeah exactly no yeah big up yeah. to you mm-hmm. Thank you so much. And I'm a firm believer of, of everything happens for a reason. You know, the universe answers eventually. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, especially when it's something that's your calling. If it's your calling, then it will always be calling, calling, calling up until you answer. Yeah. I do also feel sorry for people that kind of, you know, tune off or tune down that that sound that says you're not supposed to be here you're supposed to be here because Mm. like for example when you were going through what you were going through that's your whole nervous system your whole body and your subconscious telling you that this is not where you are supposed to be you know the sirens are going off the alarms are going off this is not where you're supposed to be but some some people because of social pressure because you know you're trying to survive they have financial needs and stuff like that then they they shut that off and they continue in the path that they're not supposed to take and they turn out miserable, unfortunately. But some people do make a U-turn, um, but some some don't. And I think that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry I about wanted... that. No, it's fine. I wanted to ask, um, who's your who's your favorite South African actor? Warren Masimula. Well, I don't.